Hey friends, this video discusses one human behavioral trait that studies show is one of the most important traits to have if we're going to lead a successful and fulfilling life, something we all want. This trait is one of the primary earmarks of success. It's a human trait that is necessary to success and inner fulfillment. Unfortunately, it's also a trait that our organic brains are neurologically engineered to, a, to avoid at almost all costs. You see the dilemma. Here's a trait we absolutely must possess in order to achieve the lives we desire. Yet our brains are organically engineered to not possess or use this trait. I've written about this before, but it's so important that it bears covering repeatedly. After all, we know that repetition is one of the key factors in adult learning, in personal change, personal growth, and in success. I'll also share personal observations from my own careers in very diverse professions that provide anecdotal evidence supporting the conclusions in studies. My four careers have been in really widely divergent industries and professions. I've been a professional actor, mostly on stage in the theater, but also in TV, including a brief stint on a number one TV show. It was exciting. I've also been a Fortune 20 vice president in corporate finance, banking, and business development. I, would, I developed, negotiated, underwrote, and managed large credit relationships in the tens to hundreds of millions of dollars with Fortune 1000 CFOs down to middle market CEOs with companies as little as 30 million in sales. In the past 12 years or so, I've been uh, an entrepreneur, uh, founding first, founding, growing, and selling my first business, a small financial services company, and more recently and currently running my small professional leadership and peak performance speaking and training business. So as you might guess, the professional skills and responsibilities in each of these professions require very different skills as well as differing interests and ambitions, but there are absolutely common traits to peak performance and success in each of these professions and in all professions that are shared commonly amongst all of them. And true to form, the people I've known, many of whom were at or climbed to the pinnacle of these various professions, they all shared these traits. But keeping things simple and focused, this video will focus on one trait, and it's a trait that we all naturally resist, and it's called discipline. And doesn't discipline conjure images and feelings of pain, avoidance, and resistance? You bet it does. So let's focus on making discipline easy and painless. First, let's cover other things that precede or accompany the discipline, what all these people share, differentiates them from other unsuccessful people, what compels them to be disciplined. All these people possess a clear, passionate, and compelling sense of who they are, what they must achieve with themselves and their lives. This is often called life purpose, though it need not be called life purpose. You can call it whatever you want. You can call it Sally Mary, as many people seem to get hung up on the term life purpose. But these people all possess that. These people also possess a tenaciously dogged need to grow and to be great and to win at what they define as their purpose. It's their great passion. Now, while these traits aren't necessary to require, necessarily required to employ the simple tricks I'm about to suggest to you, I nevertheless mention them because if you don't believe and feel that the benefits of discipline are compelling and necessary for you, then your brain almost certainly won't be willing to employ the simple tricks I'm ab about to suggest. You're probably familiar with the infamous marshmallow study at Stanford University. If not, I'm not going to go into great depth on it here, but I encourage you to look it up and read about it, the marshmallow study at Stanford. The initial study was done in the late 1960s with follow-ups in the subsequent decades up through the 80s and 90s, maybe longer, I'm not sure. The studies indicated that young children who had the discipline to delay gratification in the moment so as to achieve the promise of a more desirable future award, well, these kids went on to succeed in life 
at much higher levels than the other subjects who lacked the self-discipline. These kids that exhibited self-control, self-discipline at a young age, and I think they were mostly around age seven, these kids went on to live lives that were both subjectively and objectively more productive, successful, happy, and fulfilled. Also, very important, and what I want to cover in this video is that the Marshmallow study also revealed that these kids, the successful ones, the self-disciplined ones, whether consciously or unconsciously, typically employed mind-focused behavior techniques in the moment. They manipulated their focus, their emotions, their desires, and their behaviors and actions using their conscious creative minds and their physiological bodies to force themselves into a state and behavior of self-discipline. They used their creative conscious minds and bodies as tools to achieve discipline, to delay gratification, and get a greater reward in the future. For example, they would repeat a physical movement or a sound as a way of distracting their minds in the moment from the highly desired marshmallow in front of them, again, delaying gratification for a greater future reward. There are at least two important points here, possessing and exhibiting discipline as a tool to achieve higher future gains, as a tool to achieve the lives we all desire. Having discipline absolutely matters. And number two, we aren't at the mercy of the discipline gods or of fate. In fact, we can consciously again employ our conscious creative minds and bodies to hack our brains and achieve discipline, thereby achieving the other things that we most desire in life which always come down the road. Again, I've written on this before, but as learning science has shown, repetition is the mother of all skill. So it bears repeating and repeating and repeating. My advice to you is, first of all, do what these kids did over 50 years ago. Use your conscious creative mind and your body to hack your unconscious and your conscious brain and make discipline easy or at least easier. And here's another simple brain hack trick to make discipline and productivity simple. Our brains are engineered by evolution to perceive everything from a subconscious perspective of, is this dangerous or is it safe? And to the subconscious non-rational brain, anything with obstacles, anything with difficulty or perceived potential pain, any of these things are to be avoided, and at nearly all costs. This is a subconscious neurological phenomenon and an imperative for our brains, and we're not conscious of it. Our brains naturally seek and take the path of least resistance. We naturally, and again, unconsciously, perceive and experience discipline as difficult, painful, and therefore to be avoided. What's more, our old unconscious brains determine whether or not we get the satisfying to euphoric experience of the neurochemicals our brains desire, chemicals such as dopamine and serotonin. Well, again, we can use our conscious creative minds and our physiological bodies to hack our subconscious neurophysiological chemical and electrical brains and fool them into the experiences, perceptions, behaviors, and actions that are in our highest personal interest today and in the future, rather than just accepting the limitations of our brain's default drive to seek what was our species outdated highest good from 100,000 years ago. So, how might you do this? Well, for those important activities that you seem to avoid, First of all, stop looking at the whole long painful process. Rather, focus only on adding one incredi incredibly simple and quick step to an already established habit pattern that you have. After all, isn't it true that the first step in discipline is always the hardest? For example, if we know that we must start an audit, a report, or project, one that will take hours, weeks, maybe even months. And especially if we don't like 
this process. Wow. Well, then that feels like Mount Everest towering before us, doesn't it? That's a lot of pain to be avoided. Then our subconscious and our conscious will start to find all sorts of reasons why not to begin, why other things are more important to take care of right now. But if we make the first step in beginning that project so childishly simple and short that we can't say no, well, then we've actually conquered that first most painful step of a thousand. And once that first step is taken, our internal momentum is to continue because our brains are also designed to complete loops. Our brains default is also to not leave things undone. Our brains naturally crave and seek completion. And in any event, once the initial hurdle, the first step is conquered, well, the barrier is broken. We have the pleasure and pride of action taken. And what's more, the process becomes much less imposing. What if instead you decide that rather than taking on that bridge, you delay that gratification, or in this case, the pain of a 30-story fall, and you instead choose the path to your long-term gain, pleasure, fulfillment, and success. So how might you do this? Make it easier. Make it even easy, possibly. So take a habit you already have. Add one simple, simple easy step to it. A step that leads your brain to the next step in working on your audit. So let's say you always turn on your PC first thing in the morning. Come into the office, turn it on. First thing you do. So then add to that established habit that the next non-negotiable step after you've turned on your PC each morning, or at least tomorrow morning, is to find the icon for the audit software program. Then the next non-negotiable and habitual new habit step is to click on and open the program. Simple enough, right? You sit at your desk, you turn on your computer, you open the audit program. That's it. In that order. That's simple. Painless. Very quick. Of course, once the audit program, and by the way, you focus on each simple step, not on the long process. So once the audit program is open, the next non-negotiable step, at least on the first day, is you give the audit, the, the, the new uh, document or, or new file uh, a name and you save it. So you've broken inertia. You've slapped fear, avoidance, and procrastination in its smug face, and you've begun momentum. And importantly, You've also begun a process your brain will want to complete. Again, do not think of the hours, weeks, or months in front of you in this process. Use your conscious, creative mind to fool your old, safety-seeking brain. Make it about this individual step in a process and make the process simple and painless. It's always only about the next simple non-negotiable step in a process, making the process simple, painless, while also setting up your brain to naturally want to complete what you've started. All right, here's my second technique you can use to further optimize the process for yourself even more. Circling back to those highly desirable neurochemicals that our brains crave that we spoke about just a few minutes ago. With each step you take, use your mind and your body and your emotions to hack and further fool your unconscious brain into secreting these desirable chemicals. And in this way, you make the process of discipline actually desirable to your unconscious brain. Use your thoughts, your emotions, your focus, your body to exaggerate and heighten your sense of excitement. Like right now, I'll use my arms. And, and, and then what you're doing, your body, your unconscious brain that secretes dopamine and serotonin and these other desirable chemicals, it doesn't know that what my body's doing right now is being consciously forced on it. And I feel different now just by doing this. I feel more energized, more focused, more positive, more um, driven in this moment simply by how I'm using my body. Our unconscious neurophysiological brains run our lives. Why not use our conscious creative minds, brains, and bodies 
that we've been blessed with to hack and fool our old unconscious brains. Heck, if you could take a magic wand and turn, let's say you have a 1999 Toyota Corolla. If you could turn that into this year's premium Tesla, Mercedes, or Lamborghini, would you do it or not? Just by waving a wand. So why treat yourself with any less positivity, promise, discipline, and respect? So what's the most important thing you could be doing now to achieve your greatest life meaning or your highest goals? And what simple initial step, what action can you take now to begin momentum? Try these two simple techniques and I know you'll be excited and amazed. Live, love, and succeed with passion, purpose, and perseverance, my friends.